Hi there folks, welcome back to the Euro and Andy Fishing Channel. It's Andy again and we are back in the UK. It's kind of bittersweet because Slovenia was absolutely amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed the series. It was boiling hot while we were out there and there wasn't a breath of wind. And in the time that we've been away, all of a sudden, it's autumn. It's cold, it's windy, we've had some rain in the last 48 hours. It's all changed in the UK. Well, what this does mean is we're creeping towards the grayling season and it's your in infant time. Those of you who subscribe to the channel will know that we did a two-part series on how to use your own infant kit, how to start your own infant. And if you haven't watched that, we'll link that in the description below because it'll be super important and it's massively relevant to what we're going to do today. We get a large number of questions about kit on all the vlogs. Massive interest when we do the vlogs with the cheaper kit, with the budget kit, with the stuff like the wish reels and the poundland lures that you don't necessarily find. So IB and I thought to ourselves, crikey, actually it's difficult to get a very cheap Euro Nymphing rod. Off the top of my head, the cheapest one I could think of on the market that's branded was the Shakespeare Agility, which has now crept up to about 70 pounds, I think. So even that's got a little bit more expensive. So we have scoured the internet, trying to find a budget Euro Nymphing rod. And hopefully in this tube, we might have found the answer. So this arrived at the house about a week ago, and I only ordered it seven or eight days before that. This is a nymphing rod, well hopefully it's a nymphing rod, I haven't actually opened it yet, but this should be a 10 foot, three to four weight rod that I've ordered off of eBay. Now the big news about this rod is that this rod's cost me less than 25 pounds, including postage. If this is any good, it may well be the best value nymphing rod on the market. First things first though, we've got to find out if it's even in there. First thing to notice, even before I start to open the tube, is that actually when it arrived, there is a little bit of damage to the tube. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about this. It looks like it's had a fairly decent thump, but it's pretty strong as well. Let's find out. Well, it would appear there is a fishing rod inside there. It's been packed with a little piece of foam. It's down inside the bag. That's quite a nice idea to stop the sections from clanging around each other. I'll just drop that down there for the moment. Don't you blow away. Let's have a look, see what we've got in here. I hope all four pieces are in. They are. Ready, foot section. We have a fishing rod. What have we got? So non-branded, as expected, very, very simply says fly, 104, three stroke four. Now straight away, there's indicators here of why this is priced at the price it is. I can see bits of varnish on the keeper ring there that don't look right. There's bits of varnish missing on some of the whippings. The real seat has a little bit of a scratch on it. It's not perfect, that's for sure. Straight away, my head is going, are these factory seconds? Are these the ones that got finished incorrectly so they couldn't brand them as the proper rods? If that is the case, then as long as you're not too fussed about stuff like that, these could then have been an absolute bargain. Let's check the other sections out though. Okay, so we've got one lined stripper guide and the rest of it is fairly thick, heavy snakes. Again, I can see evidence here of slightly dodgy finish, but all the guides are on. It looks like they're all pointing in the right direction. And that means it's time for a bit of a shop where I got all that went together quite nicely. Well, all the pieces go together. First impressions from the shop waggle. Compared to the rods that Ivy and I use usually, and we've, we've both been using that Sierra Brook 10 foot 2 weight, it's definitely heavier than that, but you've got to expect that because this is a 3-4 anyway, so it is a slightly heavier rod. The recovery actually, the recovery speed, is pretty quick. It feels tip heavy, it feels a little bit clumsy. It's not the end of the world. We're going to have to get past the finish because clearly there are going to be issues with that. Jeez, I'm looking forward to trying this. So the plan is we're going to fish mostly with the French leader and Euro Nymph because that's what we wanted to try this out with. That was, that was the whole idea. But we've also got a dry and dropper rig so we can do a little bit of that with it as well to see how versatile it is as an infant rod. We've also bought a dry fly reel and leader with us. So hopefully at the end of the day's fishing we'll have given this thing a really good going over. See if this sub 25 pound eBay Euro Nymphing rod might just be the biggest Euro Nymphing bargain out there. So I've got my regular nymph and reel on here, Traction uh, 1LW. And you can see that this is perhaps, the rod is a bit top heavy for this reel. It looks like it could actually do with a slightly heavier reel on the back of it. That's to be expected, because IB and I use these reels on the back of a two weight and this is a much heavier rod than that. So yeah, definitely, if you're gonna buy this rod, I'd think about having a slightly heavy reel on the back of it. Other than that, all seems okay. The, the cork's pretty average. It's probably on a par with the oldie rod that we reviewed. It's fairly comfortable, it's soft enough. Everything seems in good order. I'm going to get this rigged up. Let's try and catch some fish. 
So all rigged up, ready to go, nice heavy point fly and a couple of droppers on there. Uh, the river's very low and very clear, which is unusual for this time of year, obviously. Because of that, I would usually fish 7x uh, droppers on here, because these fish can get a little bit wary, particularly when the river's clear. In truth, even though the eBay listing says that this is 100% carbon, it feels a little bit clumsy. I don't think I'd want to go straight in with the 7x with this rod. So I've started on some 6x, which is about three and a half pound. I'll get used to that first, and if I feel like we can taper down a little bit, we'll do that. This is only going to be an issue for us for one day because I, B and I are actually going to give this rod away to one of the YouTube subscribers. So you'll want to stay tuned to the end of the video to find out exactly how he can win this rod. Okay, first steps in with the sub 25 quid nymphing rod. Let's see what we can do. Right, he definitely feels more tip heavy than my normal rods, there's no doubt about it. It does feel a little bit more clumsy. I'm struggling to get any struggling to get any great load or feel from the flies so far. Feels very different to the rods I usually use, that might have been a tap. But you know it does deliver the flies out there straight away. I mean this feels like it could be a really good rod for fishing heavier indicators or perhaps heavier teams of flies. There's one. Oh he's off just at the end of the drift right so was that a piece of bad fishing on my part is that a little bit of evidence that perhaps the action on this thing is a little bit heavier that's one fish bumped off already and that's that's how i felt initially when i gave it that first wiggle right so that's important <laughs> yeah it's just yeah it's just collapsed so it felt like the sections went together pretty well but it's only a short kind of area where it, there's friction. It feels like the initial part of the joint is quite loose and then it just kind of stops. Let's see if that happens again during the rest of the day. I've worked the shallower part of this pool up. Definitely bumped a couple of fish. The rod feels much stiffer than I was expecting to be honest. But we've got to the point in the pool now where I could do with a bit more weight and I think this might be where this rod will shine is with slightly heavier flies. So we'll switch to a bigger nymph. And see how it does with that. Change the game up a little bit to that big four and a half milli because it's deep and fast in front of me. Let's see if that makes a difference. Straight away, a little bit more ping in the cast. It's definitely happier with that heavier weight. It's actually still not quite getting down. I might need to go up another weight. There's a fish. There we go. There we go. Right, it's go easy with this guy. Uh, not a huge amount of action in the rod there in terms of flex. It's fairly through actioned. This might be a good fish actually. Let's dial that drag down a little bit. Unusual, whatever it is I've hooked is headed upstream. Quite fast water, so I don't want to push it too hard. My initial thought was it was a grayling, but it'd be odd for those guys to head straight upstream. Just walk downstream here a little bit in some slightly calmer water. Seems to be slightly more under control now. Rod's bending right the way through to the handle section. That's a brownie. It's a brownie, that's why it tore off upstream. Let me get the other side of him. Nice brownie, really nice one. Nice big wild fish. What a first fish to hook on a rod this is. That's a gorgeous fish. Just get a little bit more line on the reel. Danger time for a stiffer rod now. That softer rod would cushion these last lunges and stuff as it comes up but with this slightly heavier rod you just have to be a bit more careful that's a lovely fish come on come on 25 quid nymphing rod wild brownie oh no what have I done oh, panic <laughs> well, I tried my hardest to knock it off there at the end I totally lost sight of him it's an absolute beauty well, 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 when you come out to do these reviews, you're never really quite sure what you're going to catch or if you're going to catch it all. As a first fish, that is one absolutely exquisite wild brown that the 25 quid rod actually dealt with very nicely indeed. I came out expecting a few grayling and maybe a couple of smaller brownies. That's an absolute beauty. Well, we'll get this guy back, but that is score one for the cheapest nymphing rod I have ever seen. Back you go, buddy.
A couple of bits I've already noticed about the rod. First off, obviously I've talked about it being a little bit heavier than what I'm used to, and it definitely is. It, it's quite tip heavy. I feel like I need a heavy reel on the back end of it. Not only is it heavy in weight, but it's also slightly heavier in the action than I'm used to. Now, they list this as a 3.4. It's definitely at least a four. To be honest, it feels like this is probably more like a modern five weight. Very parabolic action. There's heaps of power through there. Perhaps a little bit too much for more delicate French leader stuff. If you're used to a two weight, a one weight, or even a zero weight, this is gonna feel like an absolute cannon. For someone who's just getting started though, it might not be a bad option, but I wanna fish it a little bit more. Let's find out. Right, so I've come back up the same pool we caught that trout out of, just to see what else is lurking in here. I'm expecting a couple of grayling in truth. Let's just see if we can see if we can score a couple more on the on the cheap nymphing rod. Let's try one down the outside. I haven't really spent much time over there. Ooh. Let's try that one again. Right, what's going on there? That sounded like a snap. Nope, it's come loose again. So that's twice now. So there's real issues there with this thing staying pinned on. Just going to check that joint very quickly and make sure there's no other damage. So I've given that joint a good check over. I can't see any damage there, but already starting to get a feel for the limitations of this rod. And it looks like if you're going to use it regularly for this style of fishing, you'd probably want to tape that joint. There's the bottom again. Pitfalls are using these heavy flies. Oh, there we go, there's a fish. Nice fish, grayling. So, a real test of the action of the rod then, because these guys have got much softer mouths than the trout. Will he stay pinned or will this rod be too heavy? He stayed pinned, fantastic. So, I'm not going to lie, the second time that joint came away then, both Yevra and I thought that the rod had broken. It hasn't, there doesn't seem to be any damage at all. And we've kept fishing and a couple of casts later, Lovely Derbyshire grayling, which stayed pinned even though the rod's a little bit heavy in the action. Yeah, so I'm building up a picture of the rod already. I mean, it's probably not the perfect French leader rod. It's 25 quid. We weren't expecting it to be the perfect French leader rod. It's a lot more capable with a heavier weight. So if you're one of those anglers who's fishing rivers like the Tweed or the D when you're using real heavy point flies, actually, it's pretty relevant. I'm really interested to try this out with some slightly lighter flies at some point, but I also want to get back in here and try and catch one more. Couple of wild fish to start with. That's always the way to go. And we're just going to try and get one more out of this pool, and then we want to change the change the dynamic of the test slightly. Got to make sure this thing's an all-rounder. Oh, there's a fish. Oh, he's off. Ah, it's the second one I've bumped off. Exactly where we thought they'd be at the top of this pool. There's another one. Okay, what have we got here? Whee! That looks like another wild brownie. Let's get you on the reel, I think. Wow, jumping. Rod's doing okay so far. Doesn't appear to be any major flat spots in there. Yeah, nice wild brown. Lovely fish. There we go. Well, there we have it. It works. It's catching fish. It's not the most subtle fishing tool in the world, but it's definitely working for us. We're having to, having to use every bit of ability I've got to make it work, but when you get it right, it's absolutely fine. Gorgeous fish, look at that. Bright red spots. <laughs> Away he goes, wow, he shot off super quick. So that was really cool, I'm happy with that. I feel like in terms of the longer range nymphing techniques, I've got a bit of a feel for it now. It definitely isn't a light nymphing rod. So if you're looking for like, something super, super lightweight, just to fish for grayling with, with very small nymphs and light tippet, it's probably not gonna be the rod for you. It feels like something that's gonna be great for the guys throwing indicators longer range and stuff like that, but we've got more tests with this yet. And the next test is how it deals with shorter range techniques. And I think IB is gonna be the right person to tell you all about how to fish with it. Well, hello everyone. I guess it's time now for an expert's opinion. We had Andy waffling around and you know, his opinion is not that much worth it, but the real expert is gonna come in now, show you how it's done, tell you how it actually is. Let's go and see. 
I actually will disagree with Andy. I can feel all the ticking in the blank once the fly is down. It's a big something. I don't know what it is. Oh, uh, right, get away from those trees. I think it's a brownie. Yeah, it is. Oh my God, that is gorgeous. I don't know if the fish is wild or not. It's really odd because it has red spots on it. It's quite beautiful, but at the same time, oh, splashy. But yeah, it has red spots on it. I don't know. I think it's a wild fish. Let me know what you guys think. And I'm gonna slip him back. So like I said, the rod, it's bloody heavy. I can already feel it on my shoulder, but I don't know. I will try five more minutes in this pool here, see how I get along with it. And hopefully it doesn't fall apart either. Let's see. My Prince Lord, Mr. Buckley, is saving the day again. How kind of him. So, Andy got me out of the tree and changed my flies for me. So I'm gonna try and nim this again. Hopefully it's, oh, I wanted to say, hopefully it's not ruined by us walking all over it, but I can see a big fish again. It's not the same fish that I just caught, is it? To be honest, for you, those of you that have seen us do a review of... Oh, it's a nice grayling, I think. Yeah. It's a lovely grayling. Look at that. Oh my God, it's a big grayling. <laughs> Clearly, the cheap outfits are bringing us luck because when we reviewed the last time a cheap little rod, we had a lot of really nice sized fish and now it's happening again. I am not going to complain, but I was just about to say when I was playing my fish with the little rod, the whole time I kept saying like, why am I doing this on this rod? Like if I lose it, I didn't have any confidence in the rod. With this rod, for some reason, I don't know, it just seems fine. I feel very confident in it. There was never like even a shadow of a doubt that, oh, what if I lose the fish because of the rod? Let's see the grayling now. I didn't expect that. I was pretty pleased with the brownie and like I said, even a few casts before uh, I caught this one, I was like, it would be really nice if I caught a grayling. Clearly I'm cursed with very energetic grayling, but that's an absolute belter of a fish. Look at that. I'm so, so chuffed. Whoop. <laughs> like I was saying, I'm so chuffed with this grayling and I think I'm going to give the rod back to Andy to review perhaps dry and dropper or dry fly. So it's handled that French leader really nicely. Ibe's made that look easy. That was a beautiful grayling. I'm jealous of that one. Uh, so we've switched it up a little bit. I've attached a fly line on there. I've now got a four weight fly line on there and we're going to fish dry and drop. You can see there I've got the good old full and mill indicator clean camera. And about three and a half foot down to a two and a half or three mil pheasant tail. And I just want to see how it reacts in terms of A, I want to see how it casts a fly line. If there's any bounce, if there's anything significant wrong in terms of the action. I want to see how well it picks stuff up and repositions it, how well it mends. I actually think that in terms of techniques, this could be one of the ones where this rod excels. There's only one way to find out. Quite a lot of water to cover as well. Proper dry and drop of water this. Loads of space, there could be fish anywhere. Let's try that one straight down the middle first. Oh. There's a fish, there we go. There we go, that's exactly where I thought they'd be, just down the middle there. Not sure what we've got. Possibly a grayling by the looks of it. Come on, buddy. There we go. In the net. Good stuff. So yeah, exactly as I thought, those couple of casts there where we've been able to just get a little bit more line out, cast a little bit more distance, they've been really comfortable with the rod. It just needs a little bit more line out to load it in the same way it needed slightly heavier uh, nymphs with a French leader to get the best out of it, I felt anyway. It needs a little bit more fly line out. Nice. Small grayling. But those are good tests for a rod they are, because if the rod is way too stiff, you bump those off. I reckon there's a chance for a couple more up there, possibly some bigger fish, and I really want to have a further play with the rod, try and cast a little bit further. I might have the wrong technique. This school. 
this might be where I beat picks up the dry fly rod in a little bit and catches a few there's a fish there we go again long range cast with the rod with it being stiffer and with it being slightly longer can pick that line up quickly always felt like I was going to hit that what have we got let's pull him back come on what have we got ah, very strong grayling surprised at that there we go so good, as I say, different challenge to different challenge to the French leader here, and this all happens at much longer range. Bombing out casts, picking up line, picking up heavy beads in the water. That's where this rod is in its absolute element, I reckon. So you already saw how the rod dealt with a short and long range French leader. You saw how Andy fished it for the dry and dropper. Um, now what's left is to test a dry fly. I have a tiny, tiny caddis on. We've seen a few small dinky grayling rising. I hope in the middle of somewhere there might be a trout or two or maybe a bigger grayling. If I don't like the rod, I will know it straight away just from making some cast with it. It's going to be definitely really important that I can cast with it nicely. We're using really long leaders. It's like 15, 16 foot. And I'm more than capable of casting those leaders with my normal rod. But the true test is going to be if I can turn the leaders with this rod. Let's see. Okay, well that is a little bit heavy. Just seen a fish rise. That hopefully will cover it. The only thing I will say is once you know how to cast and you know the basics and you're more than comfortable caster, I think you can pretty much cast with any rod. It just depends on your preference and how comfortable you are and which rod you can make the most of it. Uh, and I think that's why it's so important that instead of having a really good and most expensive rod, you actually get some lessons and learn how to cast. But it's turning, it's not turning the leaders okay, but I'm not sure it's my fault now or the rods or the wind. I was waiting. I was counting seconds. <laughs> and we have a grayling. Nicely hooked. And, <laughs> and there it goes. I will try to catch another one to see uh, and play with the rod a little bit more. Oh. Oh. In fairness, it took way longer than I expected. I thought it's going to happen after a few casts, so it did all right. It did all right. Oh, saw the fish. Ah, mother, whatever fish it is. Oh no, <laughs> what is happening? Possibly a rod too stiff, possibly the last fish, especially on. It's just, it's difficult with grayling because their mouth is a lot uh, softer than trout's. So it's very easy to bum them off. Oh, I will try one more time. If I lose another fish, that will be it, I think. And it can take the rod back. Didn't expect that. Okay, so I think IB's done pretty well there, but she did have a horrible breeze blowing straight downstream. Uh, missed a couple, landed one nice one, rose plenty. We've come back down to where I caught those couple of fish on the dry and dropper to see if these fish at the back are still rising and actually it looks like they might be, they're probably not to the same extent they were when we were down here earlier. It's going to be a real technical cast this one, I'm not sure it's going to be a roll cast but there's going to be lots of men's. He's in a back eddy on the far side, it's a complicated one, good test of the rod. I'm really interested to see how this rod deals with a longer leader. 
So as I come around this corner a little bit, I'm going to get blasted by this breeze. Then it's going to have to be a roll cast. The fish is the other side of the flow line. You may or may not be able to see. In fact, you can't see anything at the moment. There we go, that may help. There's a couple of leaves and stuff on the far side that have got caught in a back eddy. And that's where our fish is. So, a bit of a roll cast, a bit of a reach mend. That's nowhere near. In fact, might have to be off the wrong shoulder, this one. That'll do it. Got him, got him. Oh, I saw him take it under the water. Oh, dang it. The fly had just dropped under the water. And I just got a little glimpse of white mouth. And sure enough, it was him. Possibly I was a bit too late. I don't know. I don't know. I do know. The fly's popped off. That's really interesting because one thing I didn't mention that I meant to was that this is the first time all day I've used this rod with 7X. I mentioned earlier when I was doing the French leader fishing that I wanted to stay on 6X because I thought the rod was a bit too clumsy. I can't get my glasses on. I thought the rod was possibly a little bit too clumsy for the lighter tippet. It looks like I might have been right. Maybe we'll give the rod the benefit of the doubt this time, but nah, that shouldn't have snapped. Right, so a couple more casts, just back in the area where IB was getting taunted by those fish earlier. I think we've probably had the, the best of today already. Got him. Yeah, there we go, just by the tree. Absolutely perfect. Just made that little mend there just to get it round the corner of the tree, and sure enough, he took it. And actually, of all the longer casts and stuff we've done with this rod since we rigged it up with fly line, that was probably the most in intricate and most kind of delicate technical piece of work I've had to do. Thread a cast under the tree, little men to bring it round the uh, side of the bush, and sure enough, the fish was there. There he is. And I think that will probably do in terms of the fishing. I mean, IB and I have spent a good few hours now with the 25 quid eBay nymphing rod. And I reckon we've spent enough time using it now to have some pretty good solid opinions. So I think that's what we need to do now is to tell you guys what we think of the rod. Is it worth it or not? And should everyone go out and buy the 25 quid eBay nymphing rod? Right, so IB, 25 quid nymphing rod. Tell me your thoughts. If I didn't have a more expensive, better rods available, I could definitely use that rod and make it work for me. Everything that we did, I'm not sure what I think about dry fly fishing, but again, I think it would need me adapting to the rod. I'm not used to a rod that is that stiff or that heavy. Like Maybe with a bit more adapting, I could I could make it work. I don't know. What do you reckon to the finish? Again, absolutely fine. I, I see no problems. I know you were saying that there were little bits. I didn't notice anything. I honestly don't look how my rod looks. I don't care. It could be like the horrible colour. I don't care how it looks. Yeah, that's definitely something I noticed is that the finish on that rod is pretty poor. And I think I said at the start of the day it felt like a factory seconds type thing. And I kind of stand by that. That doesn't look like the final product. That looks like... I, I don't know. I literally didn't even look how it looks. You know, you're getting what you pay for here in terms of finish. But what you are getting is a 10 foot blank with a cork handle and a real seat and guides and all the stuff a blank needs to make it into a fly fishing rod and it will do some of that stuff absolutely fine i thought the french leader it was a little bit hard work with the lighter flies, lighter flies. i found once i put that big five and a half milli on there all of a sudden i started to get a little bit of feel through it that's not normal you're not always throwing five and a half mil beads um how was it for you fishing at a shorter range I was really fine. I don't, again, I don't think I had any problems with it apart from it coming apart, which is a little bit uncomfortable. And it did that quite a bit, fishing all different methods. It came apart on every single technique, didn't it? Actually, that was quite unusual. I've, I've known rods come apart a little bit every now and again. It's quite normal, especially with a French leader, because you're making cast after cast after cast. But for it to come apart so often is a real problem now obviously that could just be something that's isolated to this particular rod but it could be every single one and even if it is there's ways around that some people will take the joints to keep them together you can use wax and stuff like that which will keep them together a little bit longer but that was definitely an issue wasn't it it was and honestly every single time it happened my heart would stop i would absolutely <laughs> poop my pants like it was terrifying yeah you know that never gets normal that, no it's never no, never normal no. other than that were there any other kind of issues you found with it stuff that you didn't like i i did and i didn't hear you say 
say anything when you were dry fly fishing when I was casting the dry fly for some reason I could like feel a wobbly uh, through the blank I could feel like there is something not right I can't even explain it well that that is usually one of the joints is starting to work itself out because you get the kind of vibration and knocking through the rod so it's possi possible that one of the joints came loose the other thing it could have been it's a double locking reel seat and i just wonder if one of the reel seat nuts has maybe just started to work could itself be. a bit loose could be. but just like we did with the wrist reel you'll find it in the description box below we've put a link to this rod so if there is anyone out there who hasn't tried your infant and wants to go on a serious budget with it perhaps someone who wants a spare rod or yeah. something like that. And this was from eBay as well, so perhaps you feel a bit more comfortable yeah, buying it yeah. from eBay than from Wish. It's a little bit safer buying from eBay, I think I'd agree with that. So yeah, that's linked below, so if you want to check it out, feel free to click on that. I mean, for 25 quid, it's a fishing rod. Yeah, you can't you can't really go wrong. I would suggest, once you do get it, have a look and play around at home and see if the sections do come apart, if they do. Perhaps do something to it, like you mentioned before, to secure it, to make sure that it doesn't do it. Because it was only the butt section, wasn't it? It was the only same? the butt section. In, In fact, the, butt section. the other two sections actually took some pulling apart. So there you go, then. it's just, it, yeah, it could just be this one. It, it's almost certainly just this one, whatever it was. It was a bit of a problem, but it really it was, the, other than the fact that the rod is heavier and stiffer than we expected, it was the only major problem we yeah, found all day, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, we caught fish with it, and we landed fish, um, and even with the dry fly rod, like at the end, I think it was a mixture of having dinky grayling, which they are not easier to catch and hit the dry fly takes on them, even with, you know, a thousand pounds worth of outfit, they're not easy fish to catch, especially like the tiny little grayling, well, most of the time they don't even have the fly in, in, uh, in their mouth. So I think it was a combination of that using a new rod um, and really, really windy conditions and and it all went the mixture. So I can't really say that that rod was at fault for us losing those fish. Yeah, well, do you know what? That one I broke off on the dry fly, I do think was down to the stiffness of the rod. I, I said while I was fishing the French leader what I wasn't going to fish 7x with 7X, it. 7x, yeah, we would both fish 7x. And then I fish 7x with it and sure enough I popped it up. You know, it's a stiff rod. It's not designed for fishing with yeah. two pound tip. It is the long and the short of it. So that was stupid on my part. So on that note, guys, uh, we'll wrap it up here, I think, won't we? Yeah. Thank you very much, folks. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with some friends who might want a new budget rod. And we'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. Well, there's no getting away from it. Uh, Ivy and I forgot to <laughs> announce the competition. So guys, if you want to win yourself the 25 quid Nymphin rod that we used in this video, it's very, very simple. All I want you to do in the comment section is have a guess at how many nymphs are in my nymph box right now. Now, for those of you who just hit pause to try and count them, there are a lot of flies in this box that aren't nymphs. There's quite a few spiders in there, so only the nymphs count. We're going to announce the winner of the competition when we hit 4,250 subs, which hopefully shouldn't be too far away, actually. We're creeping up quite nicely at the moment. So in the comments section, have a guess. How many nymphs in that box win yourself a new nymph and rod? On the subject of competitions, we ran a competition to win one of the Blood and Sawdust wooden fly boxes on the chub fly fishing video and i'll be honest with you i totally forgot to announce the winner the competition was you had to guess how long the longest fish that i caught on a fly during the video was and the answer was 556 millimeters it's an absolute cracker now no one got it exactly right but there's one person who got much closer than everyone else a chap called brendan shaw had a guess at i think 563 so it's only seven millimeters off it's a great guess brendan you need to get in touch with either myself or IB by social media because you've just won yourself one of the blood and sawdust fly boxes. Congratulations and good luck to everyone with the Nymphenwald competition.